friends, my name is Sydney from Divine on the Road, and this is my van tour. I've lived full-time on the road for the last six years with my two dogs, so they're in this van as well. This is my third van, and I can truly say I nailed it this time. This is my dream van, and I'm so excited to show you. This is dog number one, Ella, who has chosen to join me for the beginning of this video. Starting with the entrance of the van, to my left, we have just kind of uh, like use of space. We wanted to put something right here. It is a cubby. I assumed it would be for leashes or for something productive, but this is this is Ella's favorite rock and it has become home, <laughs> it's become home to her rock so that every campsite we go to, she can have that particular rock. One day it might be designated to something a little bit more useful. On to my right. This is something I was really excited about. This was actually Henry, my fiance fiance's idea. There is a removable water bowl storage box basically and this is where I have put all of the leashes, harnesses, dog poop bags, all kinds of things really just dog related and then it also comes off entirely to clean and to access anything easier if I need to. Um, it's also just kind of maybe like secret storage if I wanted to put something in there but typically it just has all the leashes, all my dog stuff and water bowls. Also just to add if I am ever parked at a campsite and I want to bring their water bowls outside and then clean or just not have them sitting in my entrance then I can actually just detach them and put them outside and place them wherever which is really helpful. <laughs> So this is my work area. This is definitely the area that I've never had in a van before in the past two vans because those were the 148 inch wheelbase for transit. This one is the longer wheelbase. So I had a few feet of extra space and it was really important to me that I would have a workspace I have been working full time the entire time I've been on the road, but I've always had to do it in my bed. And now I actually can come to a separate area in the van and sit down with a coffee or whatever. And also look out of the sliding door, which is really cool. I can kind of see the views uh, while I work, stay creative. And yeah, I really loved it for that reason. Also, Pearl did join me in the middle of talking. To my right is just kind of a miscellaneous work items. I have my projector in here. I have some stuff for the Starlink in here. While I'm sitting here working, I can plug into all of my different devices, all my electronics. And so that's been very handy as well. Also, I was just telling my friend who is filming this that I have a bag of, <laughs> of my dog, Ella's fur, which call me a psychopath. I do think that dog people will understand. I'm gonna get a teddy bear filled with her fur, okay? just dog things. <laughs> other than this space being a work area, it also serves as two other main purposes as well. One is Ella the Golden Retriever's bed at night. So I can put the, or I take the lagoon table off, take the mount away, and I can change these cushions to kind of reorchestrate them and make a bed. This is on slats, the bench, and it just kind of makes a more comfortable space for her. If you have a longer haired dog, you probably know how hot they get, especially in the middle of the night. Um, and so while Henry, myself, and our two other dogs are in the bed, Ella can kind of have her own space and really spread out, which is important. And then outside of Ella's bed at night, it also is now Pearl's place, which is inside of the bench. A lot of people told me to use the bench for storage and just to kind of maximize my things and being able to use it for that, which is what I think most people do. However, I really wanted Pearl to also feel like she had a place to go. Um, Chihuahuas don't typically like to run around or like romp the same way as the big dogs. And because we foster, we do have two other larger dogs, one of whom is in Henry's van. They just play really hard and Pearl does not. And so I wanted a place where she could kind of go off, do her own thing and feel like she was safe and could sleep and not get run over by the other dogs. So. We'll show you inside there. I love it. It's basically just, we call it Pearl's Place. It's her own little apartment. And that is honestly where we spend, or where she spends most of her time. If I could, I would. Now we are in my kitchen, welcome. Starting kind of with this side unit, it is on both sides, but I have a flip up counter, which to be honest, I rarely ever use. I just don't really need that much counter space. I'm only cooking for myself or for Henry. And so having both of these spaces typically is enough, but it's optional if I do need more space or sometimes when I'm washing dishes. And then right here is my sink. So it's a really large sink, which I love because I do my dishes like every other day. And so these sinks fill up quick. Here is the faucet. It has a sprayer, typical like 
I'm sure you've seen. This is filtered water, something else I've never had in a van before. I guess I just kind of like kept my fingers crossed usually, but now I have a whole separate thing for filtered water and like an entire filtration system. Uh, and then this is for dish soap, which actually just ran out. So we shall refill, but that's my sink. Next to the sink is my two burner induction stove. I actually am like kind of kicking myself because in my first van I had an induction stove and I hated it so I've talked a lot of shit about induction stoves and now I love having one and it's a double burner and that one was even just a single uh, but I have the electrical system now which I will talk about later to actually power this thing and not run my batteries too low so this is just really nice to have I don't need propane or butane or to fill up on anything ever I just don't think about it and so we love having the double burner induction right below that that is yet another new addition for my life, an oven. Something I never really thought I would have in a van. But I cook in the oven pretty much every single day. This is the Breville Smart Oven, which if you know, you know, I guess. A lot of people know about this oven. It like, you can dehydrate, air fry, bake, roast, slow roast. You can do pizzas specifically. It does literally everything and it does it all so well. So I use this pretty much every single day and I also love that. It's also electrical so it's connected to the batteries like it doesn't run on propane or butane or anything above all of this is my upper cabinetry so i do have them running pretty much full length in the entire van i just love having as much upper cabinetry as possible it's where i keep most of my things so this one right here is really just the things i need to use every single day toothbrush so it's close to the sink face wash and makeup wipes things again that i do at the sink and just miscellaneous my favorite sunglasses body wash athletic greens random and then right next to that is just some um, decor. I really wanted more greenery in this van. My goal was to have real plants, but because I travel in different weather and I go to different places, I just think I would end up killing plants. So these are fake target plants, but honestly, they still add the vibe. So we're here. I have three full drawers right here. This is where I keep a lot of my kitchen stuff, silverware, things that you've seen before. This is very weirdly shaped because of some of the water system that's behind here. Most builders, I feel like, would probably just not even make this drawer because of how weird like shaped it had to be. Uh, but my builder, SoCal Customs, who I'll also talk about in a little bit, um, they were amazing and they knew how important as much storage was as possible. So they just cut that in as best they could. Second drawer is wash rags, bowls, plates, and aluminum foil for the oven. And then this is the largest drawer that I have. And it's really for like heavier duty things. Also, it's really heavy, that's why it's sticking. Um, I have a bunch of dog food and my beloved caraway pan. That was a gift and we love her. Next to the drawers, there is a cabinet and this cabinet is what I like to call my appliance garage. I follow someone on Instagram who in her home has an, like a, an appliance garage and it's where she keeps all of her, you know, uh, blender, toaster, microwave, all of these random things. Um, and so I really wanted somewhere that I could fully slide out and have access to my blender, my espresso machine, the grinder for the espresso machine, and any other appliance that I would want in the van. So it all kind of goes in there and slides out on a little tray. Other side of the kitchen, this is on the driver's side. Uh, this is my junk drawer. As you can very clearly tell, it looks like I've lived in here for the last 10 years, but that is not true. And then I have my fridge right below that. This is a Vitrofrigo fridge is how I think you say it. I desperately wanted like a full width sized freezer and the isotherm company that you see in a lot of vans, I don't think any longer makes a full width size freezer. We were desperately searching and this was the best one that we could find. The fridge itself is also a little bit larger and I'm obsessed with this fridge. I didn't know about it. My builders found it and it has just been like beautiful since the day I moved in. So we love that fridge. And then right next to the fridge is more storage. Starting with the bottom row, there are storage for three wine bottles, the essentials. And I just, I've moved on from boxed wine to bottled wine. And I don't want, not that I'm too good for boxed wine. I'll definitely still drink a box with my best friends. I like having bottles and they just clink around in a van. There's nowhere like safe to keep them. So that storage has honestly been pretty clutch. And then middle, drawer here is just cups glassware and random things like that uh top one is all of my coffee accessories hashtag divine on the roast that is my coffee company um and so i'm pretty committed and dedicated to making the best coffee possible every single morning honestly but be like best part of my day 
favorite part of my day. On this side, like I mentioned, I have upper cabinetry down the entire length of the van. Again, this is just kind of everyday random miscellaneous things. Uh, a lot of athletic green still lotion and like supplements or things that I take. Um, also like deodorant and my dog's goat's milk. Next up is all of my seasonings and again, all of the coffee. I do want to just show one bag of my coffee. It looks like she's been through some things. I've just had this one in here for a while, but this is destination decaf. You can see the blue van that I'm currently standing in, uh, which I think I manifested because I came up with this logo a very long time ago before I had a blue van and then me, Ella and Pearl. So divine on the roast. We love that. That's what I drink every day. Also, everyone makes fun of me because I include my pea powder with my seasonings. And I got a lot of comments on the YouTube short that I posted. Like, what if you put your pea powder on your chicken or something? And I don't understand that logic because I typically look at the seasonings that I'm using for my food versus the seasoning I'm using to deodorize my pea. Um, so that's never happened. And I don't think that it will, but we just, it, it's the same shape. So that's where it belongs. Moving over one. This is I don't know, kind of a big deal. <laughs> She's kind of a big deal. Um, this is like the hub for all of my electrical stuff. So again, SoCal Customs are the ones who built this, specifically a guy named Ike Baker. I am obsessed with Ike Baker. I will live and die for the man for the rest of my life. He is who technically built the entire thing. He is working for SoCal Customs. And so he was like the man in charge of this van. And he had kind of the specific ideas of having uh, one little compartment on the bottom that would fit my iPad and my laptop, like specifically those two things. And then some storage for other electrical stuff, my podcast microphone, all of my cords and camera gear, all of these like random stuff kind of. And then up here is how I can turn uh, on and off my inverter. Usually, there you go. It makes a couple beeping sounds. Um, there we go late below that is where i can see how charged my batteries are so as you can see they're 99.3 percent charged uh always a good thing okay get it together honestly this is for my water heater so it's on a 60 minute timer so that i don't ever accidentally leave it on too long so if i want to take a hot shower in the back i just crank my water heater for the full 60 minutes takes about 10 15 minutes to heat up to like the temperature that I like, and then it will run for the rest of that time for about 45 minutes. Below that is my water gauge, how full my water tank is. I have a 30 gallon. I want to say 30 gallons. It's, it's 40 gallons. I just remembered because each quarter is 10 gallons. I have a 40. We started with a 30 and then they wanted me to move to a 40 gallon. So I do have 40 gallons of water, which after you live on like 10 gallons for so many years, 40 gallons just feels like I could run the sink all day long, which I do not do. Right here are the lights. This is how I turn on my 12 volt water pump. And then these are exterior lights that you can't really see right now because it's daylight, but those are for my exterior pod lights. All of my upper cabinetry is red oak. We were trying to decide if we wanted white oak or red oak. And we obviously ended up going with the red oak. Also to just touch on this briefly, I saw a picture on Pinterest um, of a house with these little like, uh, what would you even call these indents in them? And I basically sent a picture to Ike and I was like, is it possible at all to do something like this in the van? And so he knows, and I always forget, he knows the exact amount of little indents that he had to cut into the pieces of wood. But I love them because you really can't tell where the cabinetry, like which one starts and which one is next. Does that make sense? Not the most eloquent way I've ever explained that, but you see what I mean. So we wanted to match the light switches to the red oak. And so the light switches, if next to each other, like in the right way, they're all from the same piece and they line up perfectly, which I just like little details like that. I'm really not that specific of a person, but Ike is. And so that was something that he really wanted to do. So these all um, are just little like red oak things, which I just think is a nice looking touch. Little splotchy wall. I like the splotchy wall. <laughs> as texture. In between both sides of my kitchen and below the bed, uh, right where I'm standing, is where my toilet slides out on like a little tray. And I have a Lavio dry flush toilet. In the past, I've had either no toilet or a cassette toilet uh, where you put a bag in, do your business, and ditch the bag. Um, and this is essentially just doing the same thing in like a really fancy way. Uh, so you go in like a, kind of an aluminum type of bag. I don't know what it's called. It looks like aluminum foil to me. Um, and then you hit a button, it flushes and you can just look up the Lavio dry flush. That's basically, it's kind of loud, but I have loved it so far. It's just really nice and super convenient. Um, and obviously having a toilet in general is just 
10 out of 10 recommend. Honestly, I'm about to turn 30, so having a toilet felt necessary. All right, I am interrupting myself in my van tour with myself to talk about something else. While this van was a dream come true, I also recently, last week, had another dream come true. Life has been very good lately, but that is my clothing line finally launched. It's something I've been working on for the last year. It is called Roads of Gold. I'm wearing the t-shirt. I did crop it just a bit, but this is the t-shirt. The back says, I would share my coordinates with you if you know, you know. And four other items with the clothing line launched as well. There is a crew neck that on the back, it says, text me when you get to your campsite. Something that my friends and family have been saying to me for years and just van lifers and people who go camping say to each other often a van life love language line if you will and then with the crew neck there's matching sweat shorts the crew neck and the sweat shorts are literally the most comfortable things i've ever put on my body and they are the same color so like i said it is a full set and just 10 out of 10 recommend and then lastly there are two tank tops it is the same tank top in two different colors one is kind of a multi-color nude and white the other is a solid black staple and those we also worked really hard on just to kind of be the best tank top possible it might feel random but honestly i wear tank tops every single day people always ask where I got them from. And so I just kind of made my perfect tank top. So those five items just launched last week. I'm so excited. I went to school for fashion business and then graduated and moved into a van and kind of became a minimalist, let my clothing line dream die for a bit. And now we are back and at it and I'm just beyond excited. So I'm gonna link that down below as well. I'll put it on the screen here too. Shoproadsofgold.com and you can find those there and on to more things as well soon. Uh, but let's get back to the van tour. We're in the bedroom now. I do like to try and switch up the energy a little bit. Obviously everything has to match, but just kind of like breaking the space up. Like I said, a workspace, the kitchen, and then the bedroom. So this is almost a king size bed. It is six feet tall, six feet tall, <laughs> six feet long. Or wait, maybe it's six, four. Henry is like six, two, six, three. He wanted it to be as long as him. So I think it's actually like six, four, but it's not quite as wide as a king. However, I do have flares from flare space on both sides and they add a significant amount uh, width wise. However, we still would not be able to sleep entirely width wise. I can. Henry could but would be like touching on either side which is not the most comfortable so instead we wanted to utilize the extra space of the flare space flares um to kind of be nightstands almost so we have these like the red oak touch back here as well again to just kind of like match energy i guess a little bit pull things from everywhere and so those are screwed in and they just act as like i said kind of a nice stand on both sides which is so nice to have that's where we set our phones it's also where we plug our like phone in or whatever we need to charge at night we have a usb c and a usb on both sides and then a little light switch for us personally so that i can turn off the van lights and then if we need like a reading light each or something we can have those on in the back i have a hatch like sleep machine I think is what they're called uh, but it basically acts as like an alarm system and like a fake little sunrise if I didn't have a skylight I mean kind of honestly redundant but whatever right next to the hatch is the control panel for the AC so I have a cruise in comfort AC unit I love the cruise in comfort because it goes underneath my van instead of taking up such a bulky space on top of the van like on the roof which is where a lot of AC units are for vans and RVs uh, this goes underneath so I was still able to have solar panels a roof deck a skylight a vent fan all kinds of stuff up top without worrying about my AC taking up any space below and it's specifically made for that reason so in terms of like dirt mud that kind of stuff you don't have to worry about it um and it also is like 12 volt and just works so efficiently so well henry and i love having this as an option we put all the dogs uh, in here i think i mentioned my fiance lives in another van i feel like i should probably mention that um and so if we're going to the movies like we did a few days ago and we need to use the ac he brings his dog from his van into mine because the ac is Amazing. I guess just the fact that we have these slider windows, these are pretty standard in flares, but this is vented right now for, um, or has these screens right here for bugs, but these actually pop out as well. And they just serve as like a really cute way for the dogs to stick their head out and like watch people and other dogs go by. Upper cabinets, I also have above the bed. Uh, this is mostly for all of my clothes. And so this one is like hoodies, jackets, bras, underwear, and books, so. Although I am all about that Kendall life these days. This one also clothes. 
just mostly free people onesies and more sweaters. To my right, more upper cabinetry, t-shirts, tank tops, and other things. I mean, I just try and organize these, but I basically have to reorganize them probably once or twice a week or so. They never actually look like this. I cleaned the van, obviously, for this video. Uh, other miscellaneous, a speaker, makeup, and a blow dryer and my skincare. This is my skylight. Honestly, a pride and joy for me in this van. I wanted, this is like a story as old as time. If you have followed me at all for a while, then you've heard this a million times. In my last van that I lived in for, I think I lived in that one for like four and a half, five years. Um, I originally, when building that one out, I wanted a skylight. My builders had never done that before. They essentially said no. Um, I was using different builders at the time. And so I, that is why the like, I, f I mean, it's iconic in my brain. Um, I had the blue ceiling. So I just did a blue ceiling because I just wanted to look up and see blue. <laughs> it was my, my way of having a really cheap skylight without having to put a whole, Ella come, Ella come here. Hey, my dog's on the counter. Ella. <laughs> Ella is excited. As I was saying, in my last van, I had the blue ceiling because I wanted a skylight so badly. It was honestly like a dream of mine. This was just something I wanted. I liked the videos and the pictures that I could see of people waking up and like seeing the outside just right away. And the flares obviously help with that as well. But it has been so nice and I, I really do love it. We use it every single day. It's also a great way to like add a breeze and cool down the van. So there's one side that's a blackout shade and then the other side is a full bug screen. So you can just like pull that to close as well if you want the draft, but you don't want bugs to come inside, which has been handy this summer. And then you can just click different little buttons, open it up, and it really is lovely to just wake up with the sun and have so much natural light like pouring in. Also for video purposes or things like that, having it nice and open and just adding that natural light is quite beautiful. Last but not least back here, I did wanna add some curtains in the back mostly because still to this day, I don't know what I wanna do with the back doors and they're just very like plain white as you can see. And I just didn't really love the fact that it looked so plain back there. Um, I'll figure out what I wanna do decoration wise eventually, but even just adding the curtains was kind of just a nice touch. And also whenever I open the back doors, and I want to hang out in the van or be on the bed, it's nice to be able to have curtains kind of close that up and not see so much inside. On Henry's side of the bed, how I have the AC on the driver's side, Henry sleeps on the passenger side, is the Wabasto heater control panel as well. So I control the AC and he controls the heat. Before we head outside to show you the outside of the van, I am going to show you one more thing up front. This was probably the first section of the van that we actually did, at least for the pocket door and this partition wall. I am a big advocate of the partition, especially as a woman who travels solo pretty often still, even though I do have Henry and traveled solo completely uh, for years. I just love having the partition. A, it makes me feel a little bit safer and B, um, it also just kind of like I was talking about earlier breaks up that space so that this feels more like the driving space when I'm up there and then feels more like the living space when I'm back here. So when I have it all closed up, I just feel like I'm in a little apartment kind of um, without having to look at my steering wheel. To my right, I also have just more plants from Target and a candle that my friend gifted me. Uh, and then on my left, just yet another plant. Honestly, they're looking quite dusty, so we might need to clean those. Behind me, I have a full length mirror. So just adding on to the list of things that I have never had in a van before, uh, I have this full length mirror. I can actually see what my outfit looks like before I go out into the world. It's a very nice feeling, especially for like a date night, actually seeing myself. It just feels nice, feels fancy. Um, and then this locks from both sides so I could lock it from the driver's side so that the door is not swinging open when I drive or it locks from this side just to, I guess, add the safety effect from the back. Um, so this just locks and unlocks really easily and pulls open right here. And this is a very thick wall. It's fully insulated, um, which is really nice. So it just kind of keeps the temperatures regulated from the front and the back. I am obsessed with the wallpaper. That was just something else. I think I got, fell down into like a wallpaper rabbit hole on Pinterest and I realized I don't see a lot of like full accent walls with wallpaper in vans. And so we found a really durable wallpaper and I just think it makes, it just adds so much texture and like a whole nother layer to the van, especially when you first open the sliding door. It's one of the first things you see. And it just, 
is kind of a beautiful wall. When it first got put in, uh, the wallpaper was one of the first things that we did. I actually was stressing because I thought it was so ugly and I hated it. Um, and I didn't know how to tell the builder that because Ike had just spent days perfecting it and I just did not like it. Um, so I said nothing per usual and then it grew on me and now that the whole build is done, it just like totally came together and I think it's one of my favorite parts of the van. And right above that wallpaper is where I have a projector Really, I am feeling so bougie these days. I've been watching TV on my iPhone for the last six years, and now I have a full TV projector. I put the little projector piece, like I mentioned earlier, is sitting right here. Ike put in a magnet into the ceiling, which you just can't see, um, but you just basically hook the projector right up to the ceiling, and then this just comes out from, from the ceiling and then goes up really easily. They also offer like electronic ones where you hit a button, the projector comes up and down, but I've heard of a lot of people having issues with those, and then they're harder to just like get down and come up because you're just relying on electronics where maybe you don't need to. So that's why we have a manual one, and honestly, it has worked fantastically and we watch TV with that pretty much every night. Now I will show you the front and show you Sam. <laughs> Behind each of the seats, I have a little storage box, obviously just trying to always maximize the space and little pockets of space that I can. Behind each seat is one of those little storage things, slides out, that's really where I keep my shoes. Uh, then I have my trash can sitting right behind my driver's seat. I just like having it up front. I feel like I throw most things away. Honestly, when I'm driving, I just always have trash up there. Um, and then behind the passenger seat, where the, where the trash can is on the driver, is my laundry bag on the passenger, so that's where I have my dirty laundry above both seats is where I keep all of my like jackets coats heavier things um, I have hanging above Ike put in the like five screwed in like five hardy hooks so I can like hang heavy shit there um, and so I like having that and then also um, on the like headliner area because I have the partition wall I couldn't do the typical headliner shelf where people typically like you see them pull down the door and they have all their jackets and stuff kind of crammed back there I couldn't do that and so ordering these little nets from Amazon for like five dollars has been great like I have my beanies in one sunglasses in another and like more hats and headbands in the third one and so that's just another way to kind of utilize a little bit of that space in between all of the nets, you'll see four switches, three of which, again, are for different exterior lights. I have Pathfinder lights that I'll show you once we go outside. And then the fourth one is to release my gray water. I do not have a black water tank. I have, I think it's either five or 10 gallons for the gray water. And whenever I can release that or should release that, I can just flip the switch and the water goes out from underneath. Henry and I like to say that the van is peeing. I have this box in between that just opens up. Uh, it's on hinges is what they're called. Um, they're, it's on hinges and it just lifts up from the top and that's where I keep my shower bag and a couple other pairs of shoes, just miscellaneous things I can toss in there. So that was a good utilization of space as well. And then truly the last thing is uh, the dog bed that Henry should honestly like not trademark, what's the word? Patent. Henry should patent. He's very proud of the design. Um, it's basically just a wood board that goes out to the glove box, covers the full seat, and then kind of there's a piece that goes down to keep it stabilized. And then just a couple blankets thrown on top, and that is where Ella can lay. She's a little bit too big just to be on the passenger seat, and so this gives her that full space of from the back of the seat <laughs> from the back of the seat to the glove box you know what i'm saying also there's like a tesla sized screen up there so that's been sick never had that before i think that's everything for the inside of the entire van so now let me show you the outside and the full exterior of the van before i step out i am going to add something really quick uh just for the dogs so i'm gonna shut this on you and then i will show you here in just a second Okay, this way we can keep the door open and look, Ella is ready to run. So we installed little brackets on both sides where I can just slide in this. Again, red oak looks beautiful. Uh, people have mentioned that they don't feel like it's tall enough to actually keep Ella out, but Ella is just the type of dog that if there is a barrier, she's not gonna jump over it. Um, so it works really well. I think it looks great. And we store it on the, on the inside part of the sliding door so it's just kind of like velcroed in there and i step over and she is blocked mission accomplished these are my back doors um, i added a little bit of length to the van yet again uh, with the rear box on my left and the spare tire on my right spare tire um, because i upgraded my tires and suspension i needed a bigger tire um, and obviously 
you have to have a spare tire. So I have that right here on my right, like I said, and the rear box is just nice to have for things like firewood, really dirty boots, um, my water hose, things that I just don't necessarily want to bring inside of the van. You can definitely put those things in your garage space. Just, I wanted to add the rear box and kind of put them in there and keep them out of the van. So that's also been super nice. All right, opening this up. This is also my first like garage space because I've always done the dinette conversion bed instead of a uh, like stationary fixed bed. So I always have to move this because it will fall. Um, but it's just kind of, that's my camping chair, favorite camping chair. Um, and then I just click these blue tabs down and this entire tray will slide out. I think it's like weighted for like 500 pounds or something, but this is where all of my very bulky belongings are. My paddleboard is right here. And also right here, I just have my big checked bag luggage. I am taking a couple international trips this year, which is kind of unlike me. I needed luggage and I was tired of buying it for each trip and then having to like donate it or something. Um, and so I have that as well. On this side, again, just to orient everybody, this is like the passenger side of the van. Uh, this is where I have my water fill ups. So this is the connecting water uh, part. I don't know how to like what to call that, but it's where you screw in the hose. And then this one is like a gravity fill. So if you just wanna like pour in a gallon, then you can just do it that way. And then this little box right here, is my water temperature gauge. So if I want it super hot, super cold, I can just change that right there. And then this is the hose that slides out and helps me take a shower in a van, which I also never had. I knew even though I have a larger van this time that I did not want to have an interior full shower uh, that some people like to have in their vans. I just know myself and the way that I travel on the road typically is going into gyms or campgrounds or some something like that. I can always figure out a way to get a shower. And if we're camping, which is when I would typically use this, then I'm away from other cars or other people because of the dogs. We don't tend to camp near a lot of people. Uh, so I feel perfectly comfortable showering that way. And if I have to wear a swimsuit, I could just do that. Um, and yeah, I can just take a hot shower outside, which is lovely. On this side, I have the fuse box. So that is like very accessible. I didn't always have one that was like really accessible. Didn't really understand why, because I'm not an electrical person. Um, and then when something went wrong, someone needed to access the fuse box and I did not know where it was. Um, so it's just nice to know that it's right here. And then this is like an in case of emergency, turn everything off button. So they made it red. On this side is where I have pretty much the entire electrical system. I have three 200 amp hour uh, batteries from Light Harvest Solar. It's also where I got my solar panel from. I love Light Harvest Solar. They are fantastic. And that is the back of my van. Starting the process of all the exterior stuff in the van, I have Van Compass upgraded suspension. So that is the leaf springs, the shocks, and it just kind of gives a nice little lift to the van. And I have some beefed up BF Goodrich tires, which are kind of a van life classic these days. First of all, I will apologize. I did want to clean the van or just get it washed before doing this, but I just didn't. So at least it looks lived in, you know, it looks like I go places, but I got a brand new grill. Honestly, the builders just really recommended this and said that it would look cool. And at that point I was like, just let's just do it. I kind of agree. It does look pretty cool. Um, and then right below that is a front bumper from Backwoods Adventure Mods. I also really love them as well. They have the uh, roof rack, my ladder, and also the front bumper as well. And in the front bumper, I have a winch and that is just for recovery purposes. I have had to use my Max Tracks like one too many times, which I still do have just in case. Um, and they're up on the roof, but having a winch is just really nice. Basically, this just means no matter where I am, I can always get myself out of whatever predicament or help someone else get out as well. Um, so that was important for me to have here as well. Like I mentioned, the ladder is from Backwoods as well. And I feel passionately about this particular ladder because I have climbed up many a ladder on my friends' vans over the years. And a lot of them just are very small rungs. And whether it's like been raining or it's icy or just on any given day, even if we're like trying to get up there with maybe a glass of wine, um, it just doesn't feel super sturdy and safe. And the Backwoods ladder is very, like each rung is just very wide and it's flat. And so it feels much safer and sturdier anytime I'm climbing up. Um, it also is like wide enough to, for me to like set my phone down or a glass of water. Um, and then I can like take a couple steps, move those items up and it just, I don't know, I like that layout a little bit better than the circular thin ones. I think the last exterior thing, which is ironic, I'm talking about it last, it's pretty much the first thing people see when they see my van is the blue color. I don't know where that came from. I really just envisioned this van being blue. And so when I thought about painting it, we reached out to several companies who 
even could paint something this large and it they were just quoting me these astronomical prices it was so expensive and so we ended up finding a place in southern california that would wrap the van for a third of the price and i just really loved this color we obviously went with them and now i just drive around in a blue van i understand that especially because i do social media it makes my van a little bit more recognizable um, but at least up until this point i've been in here for several months I do still feel perfectly safe. I don't really leave my van very often and never for that long. Um, and so I would rather just have the blue van and something that makes me really happy every time I see it in the parking lot when I'm coming out with groceries or anything, it just fills me up with joy. And that is the feeling I was looking for more than I care that people might know that it's my van. I have plenty of security measures in place uh, for that to not bother me so much. All right, that is my van tour. I hope that you love it. I know I do. I guess that's what's important, but I do hope that you love it as well. There was a lot of hard work and just a lot of love put into this van and living in it has really been a dream come true. Um, everything that I mentioned and more will be in the description box below. All of the different like brands that I bought things from, everything that kind of came together to bring this to life uh, will be in that description box. and. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. You can find me on Instagram. I would love for you to follow over there as well or just subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely post more YouTube shorts than I do long form content, um, but I'm trying to get better at that. And yeah, until next time. Thanks guys. Pro says bye. Pro said, put me down. <laughs>